so in the previous video we discussed about uh, the basic introduction into signals and we discussed the clear cut distinction between continuous time signals and discrete time signals okay so in this video we are going to discuss about uh, the representation styles of discrete time signals now the discrete time signals are those signals which are defined at specific instants of time through the sampling process following the nyquist sampling theorem okay that is the basic definition which we just studied in the previous video so the various ways of representing a discrete time signal are first graphical representation the graphical representation <coughs> here first what we do is that we do the uh, we draw the discrete time domain axis okay n the discrete time domain axis then we define the instants where the samples are taken let's say this is the origin 0 And then we define the other instance minus one, minus two. Then here it is one, two, three, four, and so on. Then we define the magnitude of the signal samples at the specific instance. So let's say. the magnitude of the signal at time instant 0 is 0 so this is represented by this dot at time instant 1 let's say the magnitude of the discrete time signal the sample is 3 so we'll draw a vertical line with magnitude 3 okay let's say at time instant 2 discrete time instant 2 this magnitude of the signal the discrete time signal is 2 so this will be this magnitude 2 okay let's say at 3 the magnitude is 1 it will be 1 similarly at minus 1 let's say the magnitude of the signal is 2 so again vertical line magnitude is 2 and at 2 the magnitude of the signal is minus 3 let's say then it will be in the negative direction minus 3 this is the discrete time domain n and these are the discrete time signal magnitude at the specific sampling instance okay xn and okay this is the graphical representation of the discrete time domain signal here if we write it to be x minus 2 is equal to minus 3 means the magnitude of the discrete time signal at discrete time instant minus 2 is minus 3 similarly x at minus 1 is 2 similarly x at 0 is equal to 0 similarly x at 1 is equal to 3 x at 2 is equal to 2 x at 3 is equal to 
there can be more samples as well here just for demonstration I have represented here. So x as a function of n it is the magnitude of the discrete time signal whether it is in the positive or negative direction and n is the specific instant at which the samples are taken. These vertical bars are the sampling instants, the samples, okay, these vertical bars, these are the samples which are taken, the samples of the continuous time signal which are taken at the specific time instant n as per the Nyquist sampling theorem. Okay, so this is the graphical representation of the discrete time signal represented by this. This is the discrete time signal. Okay. Now, let us say we want to represent this discrete time signal in the second way, which is the functional representation. The second method is the functional representation. The functional representation. Suppose we want to represent the same signal in the functional representation style, that method. Here, how we will do it is that first we will write x n equals to then we will write the magnitude values first minus 3 then 2 then 0 then 3 then 2 and then 1 then we specify the instance at which these values are present. It means minus 3 is at n is equal to minus 2. So, we will write n is equal to minus 2 just side to the magnitude value, the value of the signal. Here at n is equal to minus 1, it is 2. Here it is at n is equal to 0, the signal value is 0. Then at n is equal to 1, it is 3 then at n is equal to 2 it is 2 and at n is equal to 3 it is 1. This is the functional representation. Okay? This is the functional representation. This is the functional representation. First we write the values of the signal in one direction, in one column and then the, to the side of the values we specify the discrete time instance. At n is equal to minus 2 is minus 3, at n is equal to minus 1 the value is 2, at n is equal to 0 the value is 0, at n is equal to 1 the value is 3, at n is equal to 2 it is the value is 2, at n is equal to 3 the value is 1. This is the functional representation of the discrete time signal. Now, the third way is the tabular representation. Okay? The third way is the tabular representation. So, of course, we will represent it in table format. The tabular representation. So, in tabular in, uh, representation, what we do is that we draw a table. First, it is n and then is xn. Okay? The discrete time instant at which the samples are taken and the value of the signal at that instant. So, first we specify all the discrete time instant. Okay? So, first it is minus 2, minus 1, 0, 
वन टू एंड थ्री दीज आर दी इंस्टेंट एट विच द सैम्पल्स आर टेकन देन वी राइट द सिग्नल वैल्यूज एट एन इज इक्वल टू माइनस टू इट इज माइनस थ्री एट एन इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन इट इज टू एट एन इज इक्वल टू जीरो इट इज जीरो एट एन इज इक्वल टू वन इट इज थ्री एट एन एन इज इक्वल टू टू इट इज टू एंड एन इज इक्वल टू थ्री इट इज वन सो दिस इज दी टैबुलर रिप्रेजेंटेशन ओके दिस इज दी टैबुलर स्टाइल और मेथड ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ अ डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिग्नल and the fourth method which is the popular method of representation of a discrete time signal is the sequence representation okay it is called as the sequence representation this is the fourth method here what it is done is <coughs> the values of xn okay the xn values or the magnitude values of the signal at the specific instant are represented serially from one end to the other okay so first we'll write these values serially from left to right so first it is minus 3 then 2 then 0 then 3 then 2 then 1 okay then we'll put curly brackets then we we'll identify the origin okay the origin the time instant the or at the origin n is equal to 0 we we'll identify that point the value at origin is 0 okay the value at n is equal to 0 is 0 then at that value we put an arrow this marks the origin so the person who looks at this sequence representation just by looking at the arrow head he can understand that this is the instant n is equal to 0 okay this is the instant n is equal to 0 it means that at n is equal to 0 x n is equal to zero. Similarly, this one as this is n is equal to zero, so this must be n is equal to minus one. So at n is equal to minus one, x n is equal to two. As this is n minus one, then this is n is equal to minus two. So at n is equal to minus two, at n is equal to minus two, x n is equal to minus three. so this arrow head this arrow head it marks the origin and these numbers they are actually the values of xn so just by looking at the arrow head we can understand that this is n is equal to 0 point this is n is equal to 1 which is to the just right of the origin and just to the left it is n is equal to minus 1 and here it is n is equal to 1 n is equal to 2 n is equal to 3 these are the values at n equal to 1 3 n is equal to 2 2 n is equal to 3 1 and here to the left of the origin these are n is equal to minus 1 n is equal to minus 2 and so on so this is the sequence representation okay which is the most popular way of representation of the discrete time signals here the arrow head marks the point n is equal to 0 and these numbers they are actually the values of xn the values of xn at the specific discrete time instants where the samples are taken <coughs> sorry so this is how we represent the discrete time signals in four possible ways the graphical the functional the tabular and the sequence out of these four methods the graphical and the sequence representation they are the most popular ways of representing a discrete time signal most of the time you will find a discrete time signal represented in this way the signal values will be given the magnitudes then the origin will be marked by the arrow head okay the origin will be marked by the arrow head 
the arrowhead points the value of the signal at m is equal to 0 this arrowhead it points or marks xn at m equals to 0 and by looking at this the person can understand that to the right these are n equal to 1 2 3 the values at n equal to 1 2 3 and to the left these are the values at n equal to minus 1 minus 2 and so on okay so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much